June 12, 1898. What a remarkable day for the Philippines. It was a festive day, for after 333 years of Spanish rule, we were finally free from the hands of the colonizers, until we weren't. Six months later, on December 10, 1898, the Treaty of Paris was signed, and Spain officially sold the Philippines for $20 million to an emerging power in the West, the United States. In this video, we will talk about the Philippines' short-lived independence, U.S. interests in the Pacific, and the origins of the Philippine-American War. The story of the 1896 Philippine Revolution is one we know all too well. The armed resistance of the Katiponeros against the Spaniards culminated in victory as the Philippines declared independence in Cavite on June 12, 1898. Emilio Aguinaldo, who led the resistance movement, would be president of the newly independent Philippines and would lead the Filipinos to self-development. However, just two months after the declaration of independence, American ships arrived on the shores of Manila Bay to counter the remaining Spanish troops in the country. It was called the Mock Battle of Manila Bay because what seemed to be an offensive American strategy against the Spaniards was actually secretly planned out by both the Americans and the Spaniards. Why? Let's take a closer look at one of the important events that led to the American occupation of the Philippines, the Spanish-American War. The 1896 Philippine Revolution was not the only reason why Spain lost its only remaining colony in the Pacific. A large part of this was due to the Spanish monarchy's decline as they continued to lose against the Americans in the Spanish-American War. After the Spanish-American colonies had gained independence from Spain after almost four months of battle, the Americans were triumphant on August 13, 1898. American victory in the war and entry into Philippine waters made it a tense environment for the Filipinos, especially for Aguinaldo. Two months before Philippine Independence Day, Aguinaldo had already met United States officials during his exile in Singapore. There, he was promised by Commodore George Dewey through the U.S. Consul Edward Pratt said that the Americans would help the Filipino revolutionaries drive out the remaining Spanish troops and recognize Philippine independence. However, this singular event would produce confusion on Aguinaldo and Dewey's sides. For Aguinaldo, it was a promised alliance to fight the Spaniards, even though no formal and written agreement was found necessary. Dewey, on the other hand, would say that he never promised independence to Aguinaldo. This narrative was convenient for the Americans as they continued to push into the Philippines and soon took control of it. On August 13, 1898, the Mock Battle of Manila happened simultaneously with the end of the Spanish-American War. This Mock Battle was carefully planned in order to provide a smooth transition of control of the Philippines from the Spaniards to the Americans instead of the Philippine revolutionaries. It painted an image of how easy it was for two powerful nations to pass over a colony, as if it were like bread being passed over on the dining table. Aguinaldo was placed in a stressful situation. At the time of the mock battle, he had already been accused of cooperating with Spanish troops by U.S. officials. It was a confusing time for Aguinaldo, as he had just been promised aid by the U.S. several months earlier. When the American ships won the mock battle and captured Manila, Aguinaldo received a telegraph from Brigadier General Thomas Anderson, banning all Filipino revolutionaries from entering Manila. Immediately after, the U.S. formed the United States military government of the Philippine Islands. It became clear to the Filipinos that there was a new threat to the nation's newly gained independence. Despite this, in the months of September to November 1898, Aguinaldo and members of his revolutionary government continued to meet as members of the Congress of Malolos and form what would become the backbone of the new Philippine government, the Malolos Constitution. It was the first written constitution in the Philippines and the first republican constitution in all of Asia. Remarkably, the constitution was a representation of the Philippines' desire for independence and self-government. It was a key turning point in the history of the nation because it showed that Filipinos could establish a constitutional government that reflected their values and aspirations. Aside from Aguinaldo, key figures such as Apolinario Mabini, Gregorio del Pilar, and Pedro Paterno were members of the Mololos Congress. 
Felipe Calderón wrote the majority of the agreement, which was ratified on January 21, 1899. The ratification of the Malolos Constitution marked the beginning of the First Philippine Republic. However, the Americans and Spaniards were already working on matters of truce and indemnity after the Spanish-American War. The Treaty of Paris in December 1898 formalized the transfer of control of the Philippines from Spain to the United States for $20 million, worth almost 41 billion pesos in today's time, the United States finally bought the Philippines from Spain. But why were Spain and the United States so keen on buying and selling the Philippines if the Philippines had already declared independence? The answer is simple. Both Spain and the U.S. did not recognize the Filipino Declaration of Independence. Sadly, Philippine independence was delayed by the Treaty of Paris. It established a system in which the Philippines was controlled by the United States as a colony while allowing for limited self-governance over time. In the same month, President William McKinley declared a policy that would be forever engraved in the minds of Filipinos until the present, the policy of benevolent assimilation over the Philippine Islands. To many of the Americans, the policy was convincing enough, for they believed that it was only right to save the Filipinos and to assimilate them into being civilized people like them. For the Filipinos, the policy is a justification to further annex the islands and be controlled by another superpower. The hard-fought independence from the Spaniards was short-lived. Fresh from promulgation on January 22, 1899, the Malolos Constitution was already in full force under the First Philippine Republic for only 13 days. Somewhere along the streets of Santa Mesa on February 4, 1899, Private William Grayson, an American officer, would shoot four Filipino soldiers, the first act of violence and the first act of the Philippine-American War. In rage after learning what had happened, Aguinaldo declared the Americans enemies of the Filipinos and the end of positive relations with the United States. The days of February 4 and 5 will be remembered as the days of the largest battle fought during the Philippine-American War. On June 2, 1899, Pedro Paterno formally and publicly declared war on the United States. Battles, skirmishes, and conflict would ensue, and thousands of lives would be lost until the war's end in 1902. Filipinos lost. The Philippine-American War resulted in an American victory. This was a defining moment not just for the United States, but for the Philippines as well. In the years following 1902 until 1946, the American occupation of the Philippines would leave a lasting influence on Filipino culture, politics, society, and economics. It heavily shaped the trajectory of Philippine history, sparked discourse on the question of Filipino identity, and opened conversations on American imperialism. Until now, we have struggled to remove ourselves from the grip of colonialism. Our long history of being colonized has influenced our national identity, and it can be difficult to disassociate from it as if colonialism did not happen. However, we must remember that our national identity is built on the amalgamation of the lived experiences of Filipinos who have fought hard and willingly against colonizers and oppressors. How about you? What do you remember about the Philippine-American War from your high school classes? Share them in the comment section below. Like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell if you'd like to learn more with us. Thanks for watching.